Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today, I'm going to share with you some tips for your Stratomatic drafts that may be coming up. I know I've got one coming up on Friday night, and then i got another one that starts Sunday morning. So, um, and these are some, maybe uh, things maybe you hadn't considered before, or maybe things that you think are just... Um, I don't know, crazy ideas, because some people do think they're crazy, but hear me out, maybe some of them are uh, something that have, uh, you know, ideas that have, make a little bit of sense to you. <laughs> oh, wait, you're serious. Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> so anyway, the first thing I want to talk about is rebuilding teams. Teams like the Orioles. Um, because rebuilding teams, they have no direction. Think of the Orioles. They don't really have any direction. All the Orioles are doing is they're just throwing spaghetti against the wall and seeing what sticks. And a lot of what sticks is only for right now. They don't really, you know, like guys like Ruiz. What did he hit? Like 30 home runs last year? Ruiz may not be in the Orioles' long-term plans. So you don't know what's going to happen with Ruiz. So you don't want to draft him and, like, you know, you, uh, you've you got him in one of your keeper leagues and, um, and you know, you, and you draft him thinking, okay, I got this guy that's going to hit 30 home runs for, you know, whatever, or be a good player for whatever uh, number of years. And then the Orioles start, their young players start to come up, and then they just jettison Ruiz, um, you know, because maybe he was a flash in the pan, or maybe he doesn't do quite as well, or he's just not their long-term solution. And so now, you have to hope that he catches on with somebody else. Especially if that production goes down, and he doesn't hit 30 home runs anymore. So, and that's another thing you got to be worried about is Ruiz just comes out of nowhere and hits 30 home runs. So, um, and he's been around the block a little bit, you know, in, in part-time and backup roles for other teams that, old, that never kept him and then the Orioles got him. So, that's another thing that you need to be concerned about. Um, so, that's, you know, something to, to think about as you draft in your um, in your keeper leagues, your Stratomatic keeper leagues. Another thing that's not as prevalent right now as it was a few years ago is, um, but it's the same general thing, drafting off of the A's or the Rays. Because those are two teams that make the most illogical decisions, at least on the surface, that you would ever think of. Um, and, and the A's still kind of do. Like, for instance, a lot of the magazines are predicting that um, Chris Bassett will be in their bullpen. Now, why would Chris Bassett be in their bullpen? He's actually a good starter. But the A's are projected to um, start a guy named Puke. His last name is Puke or P-U-K, something like that. And a whole bunch of young guys in the rotation when they already know that Bassett is a good starter. So, you know, if you go out there and you draft Bassett because he can start, well, guess what? You're drafting a reliever, potentially. Now, I'm not saying that that's 100% what's going to happen, but that's what the magazines are projecting. And why would the magazines be projecting that if it weren't true? Same thing with Mengden. Mengden on the A's. He is a starter reliever, and he's proven himself to be decent as a starter. Why would you bring up a completely new guy that you've seen almost none of? Because there are two guys projected to be in their rotation this year that they have seen very little of. One guy had 12 innings. The other guy had, like, um, I don't know what it was, but it wasn't a lot, a lot of innings. But they've seen a lot of Mengden, and they've seen a lot of Bassett. And they know that those guys are decent. In fact, Bassett's really good. So why are they not starting him? So you want to be careful about going out there and drafting um, a guy like 
uh, a guy like Bassett and thinking he's going to be a starter for the foreseeable future. And the Rays, of course, they first of all, they do crazy stuff. Like they cut people like Corey Dickerson. I don't, when they did that, I was like, what are they doing? Now, I know, I know, you're sitting there and you're saying, how can you be critical of what the Rays did when they've won 90 games for the last three years? I know, I know, but it still doesn't make sense. Why do you cut Corey Dickerson? I mean, cut him. They didn't trade him. They cut him. So, you know, and then, of course, they've got the opener thing. You know, I'm going to start this guy for just two innings and I'm going to take him out. So you got to be careful drafting guys off the Rays because they make these kind of crazy off-the-wall decisions and they, um, and they have openers. Like, they go crazy with openers. I know other teams have adopted it to some degree, but they really take it to a different level. So you want to be careful about particularly drafting pitchers off of the Rays because you have no idea what, how they're going to use them. Are, is this guy going to be a middle reliever slash starter? Is he going to be an opener? Is he going to, you know, you don't, you just don't know. So you got to be careful about things like that. Um, the other thing I would be careful about is drafting pitchers off the Brewers because you know we've seen that Craig Council likes to pull pitchers after four innings, four and a half innings, you know, four and a third, whatever, four and a third innings five innings just for no good reason like they're cruising I mean it drove me crazy because I have Chase Anderson on my team and he used to pull Chase Anderson after sometimes four innings sometimes five doing great he's doing great the whole time and council just pulls him just goes to his bullpen for no real good reason so you got to be careful about things like that like for instance somebody that's going to be in this draft at least in, in my, in my uh, Elmwood League that starts on Friday night, is Adrian Hauser. So now Adrian Hauser, and there's other things surrounding Adrian Hauser too um, that we'll get into in a second, but just the fact that he's potentially could be a starter on the Brewers and he, there's a manager that'll pull him for just no good reason at all. And if you have limits that pitchers have to hit in your leagues in order to keep pitching, you know, to pitch an entire season, you want to be careful because that guy may not get to 110 innings even, you know. Chase Anderson, our, our um, limit in our league for, you have to get to 140 innings to be a full year starter. Chase Anderson got to 139. Not because he was bad enough to have only pitched 139 innings. Because Craig Council is an idiot. That's why. So, but, now getting back to Adrian Hauser, though. Other issues that you have with guys like him, you got to do your research. Because Adrian Hauser started last year on the Brewers as a relief pitcher. And then, for whatever reason, the Brewers came up with the idea of putting him in their rotation and he did well but a lot of the things that i've read about him say that he has to come up with um he has to perfect or come up with um his two or three secondary pitches um, either he has to improve those or he has to come up with them so um that's um something to think about too because if they start the year with him in the rotation and he can't perfect his secondary pitches, guess what? Craig Council is going to put him back in the bullpen. And I'm not necessarily saying that's stupid because a lot of managers might do that. But with Council, you just never know anyway. Um, and then, of course, there's just the general uncertainty. We're talking pitchers now with young pitchers because um, I have had terrible luck with pitchers in my league. Absolutely terrible. Because you don't know anything about them. You don't know if they're injury prone. You don't know if they're really going to be in the team's rotation um, all year, 
you know, I'll give you an example is uh, Archie, Archie Bradley. Archie Bradley is a great reliever now for the uh, Arizona Diamondbacks. I had him when he was a starter, and I was planning on him being a starter. Didn't work. They put him in the bullpen. So, if you have, a, if you're drafting a young starter like that, you don't really know. And that applies to Adrian Hauser. It applies to John Means, especially as I'm going back to, you know, the, a, the uh, Orioles are a rebuilding team, so they don't have any real plan in mind. So, um, because they're nowhere close. They're nowhere close. They're not like the White Sox. The White Sox, they came up to a certain point and they said, okay, we won 78 games last year, 76, whatever it was. So now we're this close and we have a bunch of great young players ready to come up. If we can sign a few veterans that are good veterans, we can have a good team. The Orioles are not even, they don't even see that horizon yet. So they don't care about John Means. They'll put John Means in the bullpen. They'll send him back down to, to AAA because he's got options. It doesn't matter to them. But he's also a 26-year-old rookie. There's a lot of things about John Means. I'm just going to I'm going to throw these out here. He's a 26-year-old rookie. He started last year in the Orioles bullpen. Then, for some reason, maybe injuries or whatever, the Orioles were forced to put him in their starting rotation. And, on top of everything, after they put him in the starting rotation, they seemed shocked that he was as good as he was. All of those things, each one of those things alone, is a red flag for me. 26-year-old rookie, started in the bullpen, not in the rotation was forced into the rotation, and then his team saw how good he was, and they couldn't believe it. So, I don't know. I mean, you know, all of those things say, eh, 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 don't draft that guy. Because he could be in the rotation this year. He could start the year in the rotation this year. In fact, I'm sure that they plan on starting him in the rotation. But then he just gets shelled because... He, uh, he really was just, he just had a, you know, teams didn't have film on him and whatever. They knew nothing about him. And so he caught everyone by surprise. That won't happen in 2020. But even young pitchers in general, you know, you don't know if they're injury prone. You don't know, um, you know, you don't know that they're just because they had a good rookie year. You don't know that they're still going to, that they're going to carry that on and they're going to continue to be good. You know, like one of the guys was telling me, one of the guys in my league was telling me, oh yeah, you should have Playsec up there. You should have Savale up there. What do we know about those guys? Except that they pitched 60 innings or something or 75 innings or 72 innings and they, um, and they were pretty good. That's all we know. We don't know if you pitch him a full season, are they going to come up with the Tommy John surgery? We don't know if you pitch him a full season, are they going to get shellel, shelled, shellacked? You just don't know. In fact, you're almost better off taking a guy like Dylan Cease. Because Dylan Cease had 75 bad innings. So at least if you take him, you're saying, you know what, I'm going to draft this guy. He had a bad debut. There's The only place he can go is up. So, again, I know, they're kind of crazy ideas, but they're things to think about. Um, and so, yeah, you know, but you're always taking a chance with a 27-year-old rookie at anything, whether he's in the field or he's pitching. If he's a 27-year-old rookie, a, a perfect example I'll give you is Justin Bohr, a few years ago. Dude was only in the major leagues three, four years why? Because he was a 27-year-old rookie. And there was a reason that he was a 27-year-old rookie. And there's a reason why he's playing in Japan this year. So, you know, you got to watch those things. Um, 
And then another thing to watch out for, um, I know if you're, and this is mainly, this is kind of an obvious thing, if you can identify it, but maybe people that are new to strat leagues might not um, pick up on this. But you want to be careful about drafting guys who are obviously injury replacements during the year. Um, you can look at people's um, minor league records and see what they did in the minors. You can look at how they actually did. I mean, if they were an injury replacement, maybe they didn't do well at all. And they were just forced into action. And you even have to be careful with some guys who did well. Like Talkman on uh, the Yankees. He had a good year. That guy played real well. But he... He came to the Yankees because he was an injury replacement. They had too many outfield injuries, so they had to bring him up. Stanton went down. Um, the guy that they got from, I don't know, I, I'm terrible with names right off the top of my head, but the guy that they had from the Twins or something that used to play for the Twins, those guys, they went down, and so the, the Yankees had no outfield depth, so they had to bring up Talkman. And he did great. But now what happens this year? What if Stanton is fine and, you know, whatever, or he will be fine like a month into the season? And the uh, and that other guy, um, that, whoever he was, whatever his name is, I can't remember. Um, but what if he's, he's also back? What if they have their full complement of outfielders that they're paying big money to like they are Stanton? Who's going to be the odd man out? It's going to be Talkman because he probably still has options. So you got to be careful with stuff like that. I know that's that's maybe kind of obvious to people, but it's something to think about um, as you go along. So I, uh, you know, what did you guys think of that? At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Anyway, I'd be interested in, uh, in what you think. And, uh, you know, give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Leave comments below. Do you think some of my ideas were really just off the wall? Um, because, you know, I am, in some of these things, I'm saying don't draft, you know, I'm basically saying don't draft a guy like Means if you can avoid it. Don't draft um, a guy like Talkman. If you can avoid it, which might sound kind of crazy, but, you know, um, don't draft anybody off the A's. Okay, I'm not saying that. <laughs> but uh, the, the A's, to their credit, they've gotten better. They're not as, they're not as off the wall with their um, ideas. I think probably some of their, their front office people moved to Tampa Bay. So anyway, um, I would be interested to hear if people think that I'm just, um, you know, crazy, got some crazy ideas. But uh, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, even if you think that I had crazy ideas, because I have some other good videos, I'm sure. And, um, you know, uh, give me a like and pass it on to other people you think might be interested. But for right now, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.